And that was SOS. And uh, that was Sly Elsewhere. And this is a special Halloween edition of The The Apocalypse Bros. This story is brought to you by the submissions, the prompts, from Daddy Tim. The story title is, A Cold Day in Hell. It was January 1999, and researchers were in Antarctica investigating new readings that came up on radar. The native people have also been seeing strange activity, although they were leery of sharing information with outsiders. There was a small group, however, that would communicate with a small sect of scientists that worked in deciphering the natives' glyph language. From what they could decipher, it seems as though there were sightings of large claw marks and strange non-human footprints, and what seemed to be a shrinking in wildlife activity. One of the leading scientists, and Alaskan Senator Bob Butterman's wife, was Stacy Butterman, or as many called her, Mrs. Butterman. She was specifically chosen for this expedition Based on her studies in genetics, she was primarily tasked with gathering any and all DNA possible of these anomalies. Now, no one had ever seen what had been responsible for the strange markings, but most scientists believed it to be faked by someone or some people in order to draw attention to Antarctica and create more jobs for scientists. Mrs. Butterman, however, believed it to be of organic descent. Mrs. Butterman was already seen as an outsider in the scientific community for what some would call her obsession over creatures like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, El Chupacabra, and other monsters like those. She, however, didn't let their opinions change her focus or affect her beliefs. She believed there was too much evidence to just discount the possibility of these creatures' existence just because of some crazies. She never thought her study of those mainline urban legends, as some would call them, would put her on the closest thing to the final frontier here on Earth. Butterman worked closely with the glyph decipherers in order to get all the information on this new possible creature as she could in the fastest way possible. I'm not sure anything could have prepared her what was to come, though. After about a month in Antarctica, she felt she already had made progress. She had trail cameras set up to catch movement, and although nothing was close to concrete, she did feel as though images they did take proved her theories right, or at least headed in that direction. March was coming soon, and thus many of the camp were packing up in order to move out before winter. If they stayed past then, the ships wouldn't be able to return until Antarctica summer, which is October, and they would be stuck with low resources for the cold, bitter winter. Mrs. Butterman, however, had already planned on staying a full year, feeling as though she'd get a better feel for this creature with less people around and in a less welcoming environment. Little did she know this would cost her everything. As March arrived and most departed, Butterman and a small group of assistants and glyph decipherers stayed behind to carry on research. They moved camp more inland and farther south since that's where they had been getting more radar activity. As the weather got colder, the movement slowed, which added to Mrs. Butterman's theory that this creature would hibernate. They hired one of the natives to assist in tracking any and all markings that could be this creature. One day in mid-May, they came across a cave and decided to set up a trail camp outside. They were not prepared for what they would see. The next day, when they went to get the camera and look at what it had recorded, they were chilled to see footprints and claw marks that were fresh. Having camped only a few hundred yards away, they couldn't believe they didn't hear anything on what was an incredibly clear and quiet night. Mrs. Butterman excitedly grabbed the camera and plugged it in her computer to download these images, but to open shock, there were none. No movement was detected by the camera. How could this be? The footprints and claw marks that they saw on the outside of the cave led straight into it. There was only one entrance and the camera was trained on the entire opening. They've already scouted the cave and seen that the top was closed off and there was no back entrance. No creature would have been able to move past. So, they tested it out to their surprise and bewilderment. The camera worked. It even caught a snowball that just skimmed the top of the frame. After testing and going through all the protocols and making sure the camera worked, they now needed an explanation. They now assumed that this must be man-made and someone was messing with them. The party decided to move into the cave. It was abandoned. Nothing had been in here for ages, from what markings and lack of food could tell them. 
As they scanned the walls, Mrs. Butterman saw some ancient-looking glyphs next to a drawing of an enormous creature with razor-sharp claws and an unhinged jaw. They were able to decipher a literal translation and scribed it on the wall. It read, Odin's Wife. One of the historians on the team was able to figure out that they must be using Norse mythology in order to name this creature. As they finished up with the walls in the cave and they were about to leave, they felt something dripping. Butterman was confused. Knowing that the cave was completely enclosed at the top, they knew it couldn't be rain. As they looked up, one of the scientists shrieked in terror. Ah! It was the body of their native guide. Blood was dripping from the limbs that were barely attached. He seemed to have been impaled by spikes and yet wasn't fully dead. He looked as if he meant to mutter something, but nothing escaped his mouth. Just then, as the team turned to round the cave, a giant boulder slammed against the entrance from the inside. There the creature stood, at well over 15 feet tall, dark fur, claws longer than a human's arm, with fang-like teeth, and seemed to be dripping blood. All was quiet in the dark space. No one made a sound, for the terror was too much. The creature leaped forward, in a blink of an eye, it was over. All of the research gone. All of their lives gone. Few are willing to die for their beliefs. But for Mrs. Butterman, well, that is how Mrs. Butterman died.